Hey guys, and welcome to our live chat here for Once Upon a Time, which is debuting this Sunday, October 23rd on ABC. We've got the creators of the show here, Eddie Kitsitz and Adam Horowitz. Hey, guys, hi. thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Uh, you know, this is a big sort of bold show that really sticks out on network TV these days, and I guess I'll start with the obvious question, which is, where'd the idea come from? <sighs> the idea, it, it's funny, it's been an idea that's been with us for a really long time. We had started, we were working on a show called Felicity, um, and it was the final season of that show. And when that ended, we kind of sat down and said, what's the kind of show we would want to do? And, and we were kind of looking for something that, you know, could do everything. You know, that it wasn't just, you know, uh, a cop show or a, uh, a lawyer show or whatever. You know, we wanted something that was a little fantastical. And uh, that, could, so you know, that could also be hopefully a strong character show, which is you know, what, what we love to do and, and kind of these characters that were so formative for us were sort of an interesting jumping off point. And so we started talking about, you know, what if you were, you know, fairy tales and how much we liked them. And then we started talking about if you were the evil queen and you were trapped in a place with happy endings and all you ever did was fail. You get a working oven inside a gingerbread house and that stupid witch can't burn the two children. We thought, you know, where's the one place she can move that entire forest where she could win, and that would be the real world. And that was kind of the jumping off point, but then we had an eight-year writer block. <laughs> See, one of the problems was that it was, you know, um, it was it was very ambitious, and it, it had, it had kids and, and yeah, fairies and you're not, you're and not supposed to do dogs and, and children, and we and had dogs and children and dwarves so, and fairies. So we pitched it to a few people, and of course the answer was no. Um, you know, got to, like, over the years, we, we joined Lost in the first season, and we spent those six seasons there having just the time of our life, but this idea always stuck with us, and it was always kind of gnawing at us, so that when Lost ended, and we turned to what we wanted to do next, this kind of percolated right to the surface. I feel like uh, there's so many fairy tale characters, was it hard even deciding what would be your, your focal point, who would you start with? Well, it's, it's funny, it was like Snow White was just automatic in, in a lot of ways, it just, it, it kind of... You know, Otto, she's kind of ground zero for fairy well, tale characters. Well, for us, you know, when you watch the pilot and you've seen it, um, we wanted to show a happy ending being ripped from someone. So we thought, who has a more iconic happy ending than Snow White, who is awoken from true love? So we wanted to wake her up and then watch her uh, happy ending be ripped from her. And, uh, you know, was it fun for you to come up with the idea of who these sort of alter egos of these fairy tale characters would yeah, be? Yeah, I mean, that that's a lot of fun, you know, and, and there's some coming up, like, you know, the Magic Mirror is, uh, you know, writes for the Daily Mirror and Storybrooke, and, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, people and avatars in both worlds. That, that was actually a lot of fun to come up with. Now, we all want to take your questions. That's what we're here for, too. And so we've got our first fan question now, which we'll bring up. And uh, here we've got... Uh, the question right here, what separates this show from what's already on the air, asks uh, Kevin. Well, um, I don't really, you know, I don't think there's anything on air like this. You know, whether, whether you like it or not, Kevin, I can tell you that, you know, we, you know, I think we have something unique that, that no one's really done before. And, you know, I think w taking these stories that we all know, our, our idea was not to retell them but was to try to find something new about them and to try to f fill in blanks that we don't know and to discover things about these characters that are new and exciting. And, and that all comes from our point of views as writers, which, you know, good or bad, is, is unique. So I think that's what will yeah, separate Yeah, I mean, we're not retelling time. Cinderella. We're much more interested in why Grumpy is Grumpy and, you know, what happened after the happy endings. And things like that. Has it been fun for you to do that sort of deconstruction and sort of think about, okay, here's what we saw on the page, but let's go a little deeper? Well, yeah, it's the evil queen is, she's called the evil queen. And, you know, you start with that and, and you want to say to yourself, well, okay, why is she evil? No one's just born evil. Right, and no one really generally thinks of themselves as evil, um, mostly. And, you know, for us, we, what we love so much about the evil queen is how much she hates Snow White. Mm -hmm. So for us, that is an exploration of character. Why does she hate her so much? Mm -hmm. Got our second fan question coming up. Let's bring that up. And uh, here it is. Uh, could you discuss character development? Uh, this was that was a huge part of Lost, and it helped make the show so great. How do you go about building a character? Lewis asked that. 
Well, I think one of the great lessons um, we learned on Lost, you know, um, and, and Damon and Carlton always said this, is character trumps mythology. Body parts. Yeah. Um, character list. trumps <laughs> mythology. And, you know, that for us was where we started with this show. You know, we, we want this show to be character first. And so we actually tried to take these icons and say, how do they become real people? How does Snow White become a real person? How does Jiminy Cricket go from being a cricket to a real man? You know, and, and you just slowly start to think about, you know, what made them who they are, and then you put them through the filter of your creativity and start to develop them. And, you know, it's funny, the, the, this idea, as we said, we've had for, for a very long time, and one of the things that remained constant in the idea was this idea of a woman coming to this town and, and who that would be. And uh, Emma Swan, who Jennifer Morrison plays, is in the mythology of the show, the daughter of Snow White and Prince Charming. And when we first started discussing that character, it was as Eddie says, it's like really trying to find, you know, what 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 makes this person who they are? What makes Emma in this show someone who... For, yeah, for instance, Emma, you know, we said is a character that's searching for home, but she's mm -hmm. never had one, so she wouldn't know it if she found it, and right. that was our jumping off point. And then, you've, and then you've got her thrown with all these characters who are at home, but actually aren't at home, and that felt like a, an interesting mix for us to explore. And then, you know, one other thing that sort of connects it to Lost is uh, the use of flashbacks, which obviously were a big key component yeah. on Lost, and here they're a key component too. Can you talk about that? Well, um, you know, for us, uh, you know, it, 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 what we love about that form of storytelling is you really get to, to dive into a character, you know, and, and for our show in particular, you get to see what their happy ending was or what made them who they were, and then in Storybrooke, you get to see the void in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, the curse really what it did at, at its core is the evil queen ripped everything they loved from them. Mm -hmm. So she took their real stories and replaced them with fake ones. So now there's a void in their life. And so by showing, going back and forth between both worlds, you, you, you know, you get a really uh, chance to kind of dig deeper into that. And, you know, for us, it's also an uh, ability to write things like dragons and fairies and dwarves. And yeah, there's just that fun aspect, but on a character level, it's characters who are one thing in this cursed existence, and then when we show what they really were and how they became what they really were, then we can show how that those aspects of that character are in their cursed versions fighting to find their way out. Let's go to our next fan question. And uh, this comes from David. And he asks, uh, a direct one with Lost, why should Lost fans watch Once Upon a Time? Because if um, they don't, we'll be sad. Yeah, because we, <laughs> well, we're hoping when we said please, they would, they would do us a favor. Um, uh, I, I think that, you know, look, um, you know, we, we, we know that we can't rest on Lost. You know, we did six years uh, writing a show, but this is our first uh, show that we've created, and we're starting over, so we know we have to win people. And so all we're asking for is uh, to give us a chance. And, you know, I can tell you, David, that, you know, in this, you may find some lost Easter eggs in this show. I mean, Storybrook may be the kind of town where you can buy an Apollo bar. Right. I felt really dumb because I watched the, the pilot the first time and I missed some of those references. Mm -hmm. And then watching it again last week in New York Comic Con, I was like, oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> I know. mean, we can't help ourselves. There's mm -hmm. stuff that we kind of put in throughout. But it's, uh, you know, as Eddie said, it's, it's you know, we sp those years we spent on Lost really were very formative for us as storytellers. Mm -hmm. And we're now trying to do our own thing and know that, you know, we have to, to start over and hope you guys take a chance and, and like what you see. And I know that there's uh, at least one Lost alum coming up on the show. Can you talk yes. about... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Alan Dale will be on the show. He plays Prince Charming's father. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know he can be an intimidating parental presence. <laughs> yeah, he's an intimidating <laughs> yeah. parental presence in ours as well. He sure is. But he's, he's phenomenal. We're very excited. So far, I think he's done two episodes for us. And... Uh, and he's been amazing. Yeah, we're just trying to figure out how to put a submarine with him. <laughs> That'd be excellent. Uh, let's go to our next fan question. And uh, Jody writes, will the Snow White story be the only story told in the series? Will you ever tell other stories? Uh, no, the, the Snow White story, will, I mean, obviously Snow White will be a big part of the show, but um, very soon into this series, I believe episode four, we're going to be exploring Cinderella. Episode five is Jiminy Cricket. Uh, we're going to have Hansel and Gretel. Um, we're going to have the magic mirror. We're going to you but know, tell the, lots of different yeah, characters. But one of the fun things we've had as writers of this show is taking characters like Cinderella and Snow White and mashing them up together and saying, you know, w what would it be like if these characters interacted and how did their stories interact? 
Yeah, I mean that's part of what's fun about it is is taking these different characters and Rumpelstiltskin we think is uh, is going to be fun to unleash on the world. Yeah, that's uh, and you have a great actor playing him, Robert. Robert, Tyler. yeah, we wrote the part <laughs> for Robert. We are just huge, huge fans of his, and um, we were very lucky to get him. A lot of these characters obviously go back to you know very old fairy tales, grim fairy tales. But then you have some characters like Jiminy Cricket, which is a little more directly Disney influenced. Yeah. What's it like, you know, sort of taking on all the all that history and giving your new spin on it's it? It's kind of an honor, really. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fun to put our interpretation, but be allowed to play with the toys in the Disney sandbox. And and Disney's been great about letting us use you know a lot of their characters. You know, we at, be at the dwarves like Grumpy and Dopey or you know, Jiminy Cricket and, and things like that. And it, so many of these fairy tales and so many of these stories we know because of Disney. Because the first movie I remember seeing was Snow White mm -hmm. and, and they make these incredible impressions upon us and for us, it, you know, it was this, this great opportunity and they've been, you know, amazing to allow us this opportunity of, of taking these things that we all know and, and trying to explore them in a new way. Yeah, I mean, right away, right when you see the pilot, you see Snow White with a sword and that was like, they were like, okay. All right, I got our next fan question here coming up, and uh, that's from Brad. He asks, uh, if any, what obstacles slash challenges did you face when writing Once Upon a Time as opposed to Lost? Are there any similarities in the writing style? Well, um, yeah, the, yeah. the main <laughs> obstacles we didn't get to, you know, you know, look, for, for Once Upon a Time, it's our show, so we don't get to run to Damon and Carlton and say, what should we do? Right. And that, uh, that has been a huge uh, difference. Yeah, you know, and in, in terms of writing style, you know, what, however you would characterize that, Eddie and I write a certain way on Lost. We very much try to tailor our writing to, you know, what Damon and Carlton set forth in that show, and, and you know, and it was very influential on us, but what we've really tried to do is, is kind of take everything we've learned over the years and through our career and, and try to put it into this show and make it something that is hopefully, uniquely us. yeah, uniquely our voice. You mentioned how you know you've got the, the flashbacks to the fairy tale world on Lost. The characters were mostly very separate in their flashbacks, and then once in a while we'd find out a little connection. But here they did all sort of coexist, and I'd assume that even if it's sort of a Jiminy Cricket centric yeah. episode, we'll still see some of their well, characters. Well, you know that's that's what we're doing in the mashup, and the difference also between Lost was you know in. In ours, in the flashback, they're all either friends or enemies, but they knew each other. And right. in Storybrooke, they have no idea who people are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could uh, run into your wife on the street, and if the evil queen decided you're no longer together, you wouldn't recognize her. Got the next fan question coming up here. And this one comes from Chris, who writes, Will the story be set exclusively in Storybrooke, or will we get to go back to the fantasy land as well? Well, I think we, we know the answer to that Yeah, question. I mean, we're going to go back and forth every week. Mm -hmm. Every week we're going to go... Um, you know, between the two worlds. I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but you know, can we know Emma comes into Storybrooke? Can the other characters leave? Could Snow White go to Manhattan if she wanted for the weekend? Well, well, well according to the curse, no. I mean, that's that's a question that's addressed in the pilot and, and something we explore in the first couple of episodes, which is, can anyone leave there, and what happens if someone tries? Mm -hmm. And uh, should we assume that you know no one is aging in this town? Because obviously we've got uh, two characters, Snow White and Prince Charming, whose daughter is pretty much uh -huh. their same age. Well, no one is aging in the pilot, but uh, time. Um, but, but by the time the pilot's over, all bets are off, yeah. and things things, things have changed. Yeah. Okay. Got our next fan question coming up here. Oh, sorry, we're gonna actually go to the uh, clip right now. We have a clip from the pilot episode that's de debuting this Sunday. Let's check that out. 